They say that no two snowflakes are the same, and that's technically true, but I'm gonna be pedantic about it. Firstly, at the very least, there are recognizable categories of snowflakes. But even more firstly, let's get some snowflake observational history. These here are the earliest known diagrams of snowflakes by Swedish writer, cartographer, and clergyman Olaus Magnus in the year 1555. And these two right here are pretty decent. But my favorite is the hand <laughs> and the arrow. Then in 1637, Rene Descartes did a little bit better. Like most of these at least have hexagonal symmetry. And these ones up here at F I think are particularly impressive. They're clearly capped column snowflakes. Then microscope pioneer Robert Hooke illustrated these bad boys in 1665. Then in 1832, a Japanese feudal lord in the Edo period, Doi Toshitsura, diagrammed and categorized 86 different types of snowflakes. But the first person to go really really hard with snowflake photography and to make the claim that no two snowflakes are alike was Wilson Bentley. He was also known as Snowflake Bentley and eventually died of pneumonia that he may have gotten walking home in the snow. But while he was alive, he took over 5,000 photographs of snowflakes. He would catch one on a blackboard and quickly move it over to a microscope slide before it could melt or sublimate. And his pictures were super good. Then in the 1930s, physicist and science writer Ukachiro Nakaya made the first artificial snowflakes in a lab. He grew them on individual rabbit hairs in a temperature and humidity controlled freezer. And with that, he was able to come up with distinct categories of snowflakes and describe the conditions of what they grew in. This here's a more modern diagram of what types of snowflakes grow in different conditions. So from 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, you get different types of plates. And they can be dendrite plates or plates plates, depending on the humidity. Then as you keep getting colder, you start to get column-shaped snowflakes and then plates again. And then when you get way into the negatives, you can get either plates or columns again. So that was firstly. Secondly, in the 2010s, Caltech physicist Kenneth Liberecht grew what they call identical twin snowflakes in a lab. They seeded two snowflakes side by side in the same conditions. It's super unlikely that snowflakes will grow in the exact same conditions in nature, and these snowflakes only look identical. But Liberecht allows that microscopically they're not identical down to the last molecule. And I don't know, I feel like you could say that these two snowflakes are alike, and in common parlance you could even say identical. I feel like the third most common I'm stoned for the first time thought is, like is anything really identical man? Like you could say the same thing about any piece of Ikea furniture, they're not the same molecularly. Even precision machined parts have a tolerance for imprecision. Identical twins have their own unique fingerprints and epigenetics makes them express the same genes differently. And when you think of it like that, is it really that weird that no two snowflakes are exactly identical? It's been estimated that there are 10 quintillion water molecules in a typical ice crystal. And with only 52 cards, there are more ways a deck of cards can be shuffled than there are atoms on the planet. So you really don't need a lot of variables to basically guarantee uniquitude. But also, you know, we would never know if two identical snowflakes fell and melted unseen decades or centuries apart in different parts of the world. Sure, it's highly unlikely, but thinking romantically, I like to think that two exactly identical snowflakes have fallen and quietly disappeared apart from each other somewhere and somewhen.